today, I'm excited to introduce Scott Evans. Scott is the chief digital officer of Related Companies, which built Hudson Yards, the largest private real estate development in the history of the United States. Scott is responsible for the development and implementation of the digital technology strategy for Hudson Yards, which officially opened in March of 2019. He has over 25 years of experience building and leading global digital businesses, leveraging technology to evolve and accelerate growth. There's no one better to kick off the day. Please welcome Scott with some virtual claps. Good afternoon. My name is Scott Evans. I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Hudson Yards. And I'd like to thank everybody for the opportunity to speak at the Real Estate Technology Conference. Today, I want to take you on a little bit of a journey. It's about how do we think about Hudson Yards? How do we think about the digital vision of Hudson Yards and the development of digital products that allow us to really engage the customer in a data-led environment? And more recently, how we've adapted to change and how we're thinking about the future. First off though, I think it's important to give you a little perspective on Hudson Yards. And some of you may not have been there. We opened in March of 2019. And it's really about a place where you can live, work, and play in the heart of New York City. So I want to play this uh, quick video to give you a sense and feel of Hudson Yards and why it was so important for us to understand how to bring it to life through technology. So here's the video. The idea for Hudson Yards actually originated 20 years ago. It's a piece of land that never existed before. We're creating public space in a place that was a rail yard. This is the last big development area. It's kind of amazing to be a part of it. The vastness is almost without precedent when you look around the world. Hudson Yards is like the new heart in the very old city. We respond to where we live and work, and therefore we make the cities and then they make us. The project, in a way, is a big invitation. It's been an incredibly exciting morning. We'll see you, I guess, in, what, two years when the vessel is done and we'll all walk together. Stephen, it's been 233 days since groundbreaking. It seems like, you know, it's 233 years. Being a native New Yorker, I think that anything that is new and different in New York is something that we should celebrate. One of the reasons we're excited to be part of Hudson Yard is because of how it's transforming the, the neighborhood in so many different ways. We're incredibly excited uh, about seeing our neighborhood evolve to now see a tremendous number of new collaborators come into our community is very exciting for us. I feel like everyone's going to want to just see it because it's such a spectacle of retail. I've always wanted to open on the East Coast and Hudson Yards just makes the most sense because of the density, the vision, the grandeur of the whole development. And now all of a sudden you're going to have, you know, every kind of restaurant I could think of in, in two city blocks. It's that mix and that coming together that creates something bigger than the individuals themselves. And I think that's the promise of this whole new neighborhood in New York. I know it. I feel it. I know exactly what this is going to be. Hudson Yards is going to be the new center of the city. Part of the challenges of building a technology in a real estate environment is about pace. If you look at the bottom here, we received the uh, award for Hudson Yards in 2008. We didn't open until 2019. In that time frame, a huge amount of innovation occurred, whether it's Uber, whether it's WeWorks, you name it. So the challenge is the customer's expectations are moving a lot faster than the design that is happening for a new development like Hudson Yards. Narrowing it down a little bit, when you think of everything on the top, these are all customer facing experiences and apps. Again, moving rather rapidly. And at the bottom is your traditional partners you have in a real estate environment, whether it's elevators, BMS, security, environment, uh, the environment and or property management. And the challenge there is how quickly do they move? Because your customer expectations are moving a lot faster. And the real question is, will your partners move and innovate just as quickly? Our approach was 
let's understand what really the customers are looking for, what user experiences are needed across all our asset classes. So what we did is we built a digital master plan. That includes residential, retail, commercial, public space, experiences, and we broke that out. And this is probably a lower number that we really came up with, but like it was at least 106 different user experiences that we organized. And then we looked at what systems did that touch in a traditional real estate environment. And there's over 40 plus systems. That number's probably dramatically increased since we launched Hudson Yards. And what it brought to us was we needed to control an efficient mechanism to bring experiences to life. So we thought about it as the related technology platform. And there's certain components of that platform that are critical. Connectivity, right? It's like oxygen, cellular Wi-Fi, recognition. So you can deliver content at an appropriate time to an individual when timing is perfect for them to engage at Hudson Yards. Location, wayfinding, whether it's transactions and payments and experiences or buying tickets or sensing what kind of beacons do we put. And ultimately, big data. So the related technology platform for us was a way for us to do integrations in an efficient manner and also replace them as technology evolved. On this slide, we thought about it from like three different sectors. One is all the user facing components that we would build, right? Number two is the connectors, which is all about connectivity, right? Which is again, across all of Hudson Yards in public spaces and in our uh, residential locations, as well as core technology. And core technology is important because a CMS is important. We need one centralized approach, one CMS that we can deploy content across all these user experiences. CRM, because our, our mission really was one 360 view of a customer. When they enter Hudson Yards, whether they're signing on for Wi-Fi or whether going to our website, we wanted to make sure we understand what is that profile of that individual and how can we help them at Hudson Yards. And ultimately, the related platform, which again is just short form for an amazing architecture that we put in place. That's a like open sourced environment that allows us to pilot quickly, innovate quickly, and then learn quickly about what is the right experience for us to provide to our user base. Here's a couple of examples of the products that we launched with. Um, Wi-Fi, right? Amazingly important. In our first year, we had a, over a 10% sign-up rate on our Wi-Fi at Hudson Yards. And then how do people learn about Hudson Yards? How do we get individuals to drive to Hudson Yards and engage at Hudson Yards? Well, we built a responsive website. I don't think there's any surprise there, but actually had some great adoption. We had over 18 million page views and 8.4 million uh, sessions uh, just in our first nine months of opening. Digital signage. Now, digital signage is, is an inter interesting uh, opportunity for us. It's a way of building kiosks that are touch capacitive as needed, LEDs and LCDs. And it's a way of us getting our message out about what's happening in Hudson Yards. And ironically, again, with COVID, a lot of engagement that occurred uh, from a, a touch perspective um, because you can buy your tickets for the vessel tickets for the edge. You can make a reservation all through our digital signage network. We had over 1.3 million sessions in our first nine months uh, at Hudson Yards. We also knew that we had to kind of provide an amazing experience for our residential customers. So we built uh, what we call Related Connect. It's an app that provides services, experiences, opens up your, your lock of your door. Um, we built it um, and we deployed it across the entire Related portfolio. It's in over 42 buildings and has over 4,000 active users. And last but not least, um, again, this is just a selection, uh, building entry. And I'm just gonna show you a quick overview of building entry. We decided that the HID card wasn't acceptable. So we actually have, you can see here with the HID card, we put in Morpho. And Morpho enables an individual to come in, just use their hand, and then it does directed dispatch to the elevator that they're assigned to. Another important element that we thought through was how do we ensure that we have a 360 view of our customer? And this goes back to the agile architecture.
architecture that we put in place. On the top, you have all your data sources. Again, this could be not just this subset, but multiple uh, use groups that we can add in based upon new, new partners that we find. That's integrated into our related platform. We have a, a data store structure that's in place. Um, and ultimately, there's a profiling engine that unites all this information across one profile for an individual. And then that's usable and or scalable across all of our business units, which we are using Salesforce. And we're deploying them across the orgs, whether it's city centers, rentals, for sale, office or retail. Again, a critical part of our, what we're doing and also a very strategic part of what we're doing. But there's been a lot of change occurring. Um, there's a lot of innovation that we're on the process of doing that because of COVID was now the time to launch it. One of them was working with Otis on Express Pass. In Express Pass, the idea was how do I get up, right? Go on an elevator and not touch a button uh, or a public panel and I can just run it from my phone. So here's a good example of like me coming up this morning. Um, I'm on the sales like sky lobby. It calls my elevator to 82. I get on, G1's arrived, off I go. I don't touch anything, I just use my phone. It just works with beacons. And I think it's been a good solution uh, from a touchless perspective. We've got some new innovation coming down the line as far as an experience uh, we're partnering with Verizon on called Rhapsody. This is in pilot mode. And what it is, it's an amazing musical experience as you traverse uh, the vessel. And I think this will be something we'll talk more about in the future. People count became more and more important when it came to capacity. So we have a new people counting solution, which gives us um, understanding of how many people are on campus, whether we're at any threshold, and also gives us great reporting uh, so we can learn more about how people are engaging at Hudson Yards. And that's on the plaza as well as in our retail shops. And then our next phase, which is looking at, and we're assessing whether a commercial app and or a loyalty program makes sense to deploy. Um, again, our theory of the case is more and more people want experiences. They want simplicity. They want to be able to enter the building seamlessly. They want to be able to order food. They want a loyalty program that recognizes them. So this is the next phase of development that we're going to put into play. There's a lot of lessons learned that I want to make sure that uh, the takeaways from today. One, budget early. Right? When you're going through the development process and you're thinking about your digital master plan, you want to make sure that there's a committed budget that's embedded in a development budget uh, for that development. It may be common sense, but fundamentally, I think that's important to get in there early. It, can all, it can't, does not, doesn't need to be perfect, but I think it'll be helpful in the future. Use an open platform. Right, Part of the innovation and the future proofing of your experiences, it's all about like who do you choose from a development partner standpoint, as well as how your architecture um, can evolve quickly as technology evolves. It took about 50 partners uh, to bring Hudson Yards to life and it tremendous amount of management. That's why a PMO is so important to make sure that you're, you're working together in a very cohesive fashion. One very important component is infrastructure plan. You can have a digital master plan. You can have a multitude of amazing concepts, but if there is not an infrastructure plan being designed in early, it will be tough to bring out to life. We have learned that multiple times. And as we think about our future developments and how we're scaling, um, this is a critical learning that we're now upon. And ultimately, data protection and privacy, right? Constantly evolving, but um, that is a critical brand uh, component to make sure that you're protecting the data and your customer's data, and you have to be fully compliant. So looking forward, there are a lot of changes happening right now. I think of it as an opportunity to innovate, an opportunity to create value. A couple areas where I think that has happened. What's happening with COVID and health services and making sure every single day that we're going through our proper questionnaire is going to create, I think, a, an opportunity to link that with access control, building entry, and ultimately new transactions that are going to happen um, across the real estate campus. 
That's one area that we're watching closely. Number two, the retail platform. Lots of changes in retail. We've seen Amazon disrupting. Well, I think this is a unique opportunity to put in new solutions where uh, your retail partners' products can be displayed in more unique ways across an entire ecosystem or digital ecosystem um, at a real estate environment. At Hudson Yards, we do that across all of our digital screens. And I think we're just at the, at, the, at the cusp of learning more about what our retailers are looking for us. And I think that partnership model will rapidly evolve. A 360 view of a customer, I think that becomes more and more important. Understanding how to engage that customer, how to segment it. We do a tremendous amount of work with our marketing team to make sure that our CRM can have specific journeys, have segmentation, understand what affinity groups they're in, and constantly understand where they are taking us. PropTech, there's a lot of work going on in PropTech. This is where we keep an eye on across specific areas to understand where innovation is occurring. And that then helps us to do pilots, as well as to find who our proper market, market partners should be um, for us to actually bring them into our ecosystem and, and innovate. And lastly, but not an important component, which is like look outside your market vertical. Um, we look outside of real estate. We look at where the best in class is occurring. We look at what's happening in certain areas because I think that tells us what the customer is going to expect, how we need to react. And most importantly, given the architecture that we have in place, we can then take those experiences, bring them into Hudson Yards and, and understand the impact for our customers and then determine if it's a success or not. And the last piece that we put in place, is just scalability. Um, everything we've done at Hudson Yard, we think about how do we scale it out to our new developments, whether it's at Rosemary Square, uh, Grand Avenue, Santa Clara, locations at Brent Cross. We're, we are constantly ensuring that everything we have built at Hudson Yards can naturally scale. That brings value to our organization as well. So those are my lessons learned. And those are my forward-looking uh, concepts and ideas. And hopefully this was helpful. And I appreciate your time, and hopefully everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you for your time. Wow, Scott, that was awesome. Thanks for being a part of the Retcon community.